Hi everyone and welcome to today's painting tutorial. So today I'm going to be taking you through how I paint my Zinch cloaks for my Chaos Warriors. So the only three colours you'll need are Nagaroth Knight, Screamer Pink and Pink Horror. Now the basis of what I'm going to be doing here today is working the Nagaroth Knight into the recesses of the cloak, uh, the Screamer Pink on the raised areas and using a wet palette I'm just going to begin blending them together. Now I'm sure you could do this without a wet palette, it's just that a wet palette is a lot easier. Uh, unfortunately I couldn't keep it in the video for this footage as uh, it, it kept taking the focus out uh, from the miniature itself. But as the video progresses you'll see how I go about doing this and uh, of course you can try this with other colours that blend nicely together. So essentially this is going to lead to a magenta sort of finish and then we're just going to use the pink horror just to do some final highlights. So as I said, just work that Nagaroth Knight into the recesses. It doesn't really matter if you get it a little bit on any of the raised areas at all, uh, because we will be blending the colors. And with that Nagaroth Knight now applied, and whilst the paint is still wet, just going to start working some of the Screamer Pink in. And of course keeping the paint quite thin. And we will need to do multiple coats of this. And as you might have noticed as well, I'm using a pretty mangled, um, just a standard kind of base brush uh, for this point. You don't really need to use a good brush, uh, one of your good brushes for this part. As the surface area there is quite large, so yeah, you don't need to worry about that so much. But as you can see, if you look closely, you can see that the colors are starting to blend quite nicely. And for this technique, um, you don't even really need to use a shade necessarily. I mean, I, I don't use one uh, for this process. Uh, you can if you want to, but um, you'll find that you don't really need to in the way that this works. And just in those little awkward corners of the miniature, just gonna get right in there.
So just making sure to get in at every part of the cloak as well, even in areas that, you know, if someone was looking at your miniature, they may not actually see it there. But um, I'm a little bit OCD with things like this, so I just have to make sure I get every little part of it. Just what's on my mind as well, uh, looking at this miniature, or looking at any miniature before you start painting, it's a good idea to gauge uh, what area of the miniature will be best to paint. So for example, looking at this Chaos Warrior, the cloak was the best place to start, um, just because of those hard to reach areas, and uh, if you accidentally get a bit of paint on um, another part of the miniature, uh, whilst you, you know, you're doing the stage when nothing else is painted, it's really not a big deal. And of course, because the paint's quite thinned down, uh, it certainly won't be a problem uh, going over that uh, later on once you reach the next stages. So yeah, the, the process of um, painting a Chaos Warrior for me is uh, the cloak first and then I do the blue armor and then just all uh, the, the other parts like the shield and um, the copper areas, weapons and little bits of armor here and there. Now at this point I have started adding a little bit of pink horror in. Uh, as you can see it is starting to build up there. And uh, there are some uh, pretty obvious sort of um, lines there that you can kind of see. And I, I want to get to a point where I blend that away. So it kind of blends into the color. So it just goes darker into the recesses and gradually builds into that more vibrant uh, color there. But as you can see, it's coming together quite nicely. And now just using straight up pink horror, I'm just going to start doing some edge highlighting. And due to the vibrancy already provided by the other colors, you really don't need much of this. This is just to sort of make it all pop a little bit more. Um, so use this highlight sparingly. As um, I'm sure a lot of you know, and uh, I've seen this um, written in a lot of articles, uh, it is quite a jump from uh, even Screamer Pink to Pink Horror, for example. So yeah, you, you want to use it sparingly, uh, as it essentially will, you know, in my opinion, it, it's there to uh, bring out the, um, the base color of Screamer Pink. And of course, when you've blended it with Nagaroth Knight, um, the t those two colors go beautifully together. So uh, it's really just to draw attention to it, essentially. And as you can now see, the 
um, blending of the colors has come together quite nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with how that's looking. Um, just picking out some more areas with the pink horror. And if you find that the uh, the highlight that you've done with the pink horror is a little bit too defined, um, if it's just a bit too strong like that, for example, um, you can always go back uh, with the Nagaroth Knight and Screamer pink and just start blending that. And because, of course, you know, if you're using a wet palette, um, the uh, paint will still be wet enough for you to just quickly jump back and forth between colors to fix any errors or, you know, um, not necessarily errors, but things that you aren't 100% um, happy with. So as you can see there, just blending in the colors again. Sorry, I went into focus on my hand a little bit there. Ah, there we go. Now again, just focusing on some, focusing, sorry, on some of um, those more raised areas, just with a bit of pink horror, also mixed in with the other two, just a tiny, tiny bit, just to make the highlight a little bit more gradual. And uh, I, ha I am now using a Windsor and Newton size zero brush. Um, this is without a doubt, uh, out of all the brushes I've used um, since returning to the hobby from June of 2018. Uh, in terms of, um, the lifespan of the paintbrush and the point that it holds, uh, it's definitely worth the, I think, $22 Australian that I spent on it. Um, so much so that I've actually just ordered an another two of them, um, just so I have them as backups. Um, really fantastic brushes, I highly recommend them. Um, and uh, I guess at the end of the day as well, when it comes to choosing paintbrushes and if you read reviews, um, the thing is with paintbrushes, uh, you can come across the occasional dud one and unfortunately um, that can then lead people to leave a bad review on a paintbrush. So um, in my opinion, I think it's sometimes best just to kind of, you know, trial and error things for yourself. Um, similar to, you know, kind of with like a film, um, you know, you read reviews and, and whatnot that can be really good or really bad, but at the end of the day, they're just opinions. So um, it's more or less, uh, kind of how I view things with paintbrushes because I've used some paintbrushes myself um, that turned out to be fantastic when otherwise um, had bad reviews and vice versa. So just try it out for yourself. And I hope today's video wasn't too long guys, but I didn't really want to cut anything out um, because it was pretty important that uh, I did just a one take so you could kind of see how this all gradually builds up without me cutting uh, and editing anything out.
And now that I'm really happy with how uh, the entirety of the cloak is looking, I wanted to just go back to Pink Horror. Uh, it's just straight up Pink Horror this time, and just really carefully with um, just a minimal amount of paint on the brush, just going to start picking out just um, some of the edges along the cloak. And um, use this highlight quite sparingly, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the vibrancy has already been provided by the Nagaroth Knight and Scrimmer Pink, and uh, the little hints of um, Pink Horror added throughout the duration of this. So yeah, just, to, just as you can see there, not much on the brush. Just get a nice angle, as carefully as you can. Take your time. So the more time you take, the less mistakes will be made, and in turn, the more time will be saved, and the happier you'll be. And just some final touches there. So that is going to be it for this painting tutorial. And I hope you found it really useful. Uh, if you did, leave a like, um, share the video, and subscribe to my channel uh, for more content. I've got a few more ideas coming. I'll be showing you how to paint um, uh, the Zinch Chaos Warrior armor that I've been doing. I also want to show people I've had a few requests for how I do my snow bases. Um, and um, yeah, so. And just before I end today's video, I just wanted to pull over the wet palette and just explain. So uh, this is from a company called The Combat Company in Australia. Uh, the brand is called Mod FX. Uh, it was $7 Australian, um, one of the best investments I've made towards the hobby. And as you can see there, um, there's plenty of paint left over and if you close it up, um, you just get to keep um, that paint. It'll be fine the next day as well. So as you can see there, Mod FX. Um, really simple to use, wet the sponge, put the um, paper over and um, yeah just flatten it down you're good to go all right guys I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I will see you in the next one